The sword is an edged weapon for cutting and thrusting, with versions found around the world. The sword can be considered to be any long, bladed weapon having one or two edges and a short hilt. The first swords were developed during the Bronze Age. Ancient craftsmen combined copper with tin to make bronze. Bronze blades were more efficient than stone blades and much easier to form into a specific shape. This led to the first bronze daggers. As bronze working technology improved, it became possible to make longer blades and daggers evolved into the first swords. Until the 1200s, all swords were single-handed swords, and even with the development of longer swords, single-handed swords remained the most common type throughout the weapon's history. The sword was not only a weapon for troops, but also for civilians, and it was not only used for fighting, but also for hunting, ceremony, and display. At first, making swords was difficult and expensive, and swords could only be afforded by the rich and powerful. Even when swords became more common, a good sword remained a symbol of wealth and position. Single-handed swords and rapiers came from the same root, and they have the same shape. However, there are important differences between them. The largest difference is the blade. Swords are used for both cutting and thrusting, and may concentrate more on cutting. The rapier was used more for thrusting, and reduced cutting functions. The rapier's blade is narrow, straight, and double-edged, while the sword's blade is broad and can be straight or curved, single or double-edged. We can categorize single-handed swords by the type of blades. One can be called the broadsword, and the other is called the backsword. The broadsword is a cutting and thrusting sword with a double-edged straight blade. Medieval broadswords usually had a simple cross hilt. As armor fell out of use in the 1500s and 1600s, broadswords were often equipped with more protective basket hilts. You can still see the remains of the crossbar going across right here, except of course it's had this whole um, uh, basket hilt arrangement added to it to give protection to the uh, unarmored hand. So this would be used as a battlefield weapon, but in a period when soldiers aren't wearing armor anymore. So this is a soldier's weapon that gives protection um, to the hand in the absence of armor on the hand. So this is a Scottish uh, broadsword, an officer's sword uh, from the early 1800s, a uh, style that had been carried in the Scottish Highlands uh, since the uh, 1600s and even a little bit before then. And classic uh, sort of hewing single-handed sword. You can see it's really only designed to accommodate a very simple fist grip. The back sword has a single-edged blade that can be either straight or curved. It is more often a cutting than a thrusting weapon. It has many variants including the sax, the saber, the messer, the cutlass, and the falchion. Messer was a term for the class of single-edged bladed weapons in Germany. Messer means knife in German. The Messer was part of the curriculum of several fencing manuals in the 1400s and 1500s, including Johannes Le Kuchner. This rather uh, corroded piece is actually something of a gem for the Higgins uh, collection. You would call this a, uh, uh, a Grosse Messer or a Lange Messer perhaps. It's basically uh, in the Messer family, a, a sort of utility weapon uh, uh, type derived from the Viking Age sax, but uh, this is actually a, of a hand and a half configuration. You can see that it's got this long hilt that would actually allow the wielder to use it uh, with two hands. And uh, it's a uh, subset of the back sword in that it has a single edge with a good thick back on the opposite side, making it a really sturdy weapon and relatively uh, inexpensive to manufacture in a, a fairly durable form. The saber is a sword with a blade that has a curved forward edge. The back edge may be curved or straight. In the late 1500s, the true saber blade began to appear in Eastern Europe. 
By the 1600s, savers were coming into use in Western Europe. By the 1800s, they had become the most common type of sword. The most important medieval source on the single-handed sword is Johannes Le Kuchner, a 15th century German cleric and fencing master. His treatise focuses on the messer, although his techniques can be found in many other types of sword fighting. Le Kuchner's system of sword fighting is rooted in the Lichtenauer tradition of the 1300s and parallels the techniques of the longsword. There are two surviving original copies of Le Kuchner's treatise, entitled The Art of Messer Fencing. One is in the Heidelberg University Library, and it was produced in 1478. The other one is in the Munich State Library, and was produced in 1482, the year of Le Kuchner's death. The Munich manuscript is fully illustrated, and introduces a huge amount of new and expanded content compared to the earlier version. Joachim Meyer was a 16th century German fencing master. He was a master of almost all kinds of weapons. In 1570, Meyer published A Thorough Description of the Art of Combat. This book is a complex, multi-weapon treatise that represents a significant evolution of the art that Johannes Lichtenauer taught two centuries earlier. In this treatise, Meyer includes a section on sword fighting skills for the Dusak, a practice weapon for single-handed swords. In this section, he includes techniques, drills, and illustrations from very basic cuts to advanced disarming and finishing skills. The Higgins Armory Museum has an original copy of this treatise. The 1500s also saw the publication of important Italian treatises on the cut-and-thrust sword. Achille Marazzo was an Italian fencing master in the early part of the century who was widely regarded as the greatest teacher of the old school. He maintained a fencing school in Bologna. In 1536, Marazzo authored a treatise on swordsmanship titled Opera Nova. It was reprinted several times during the century and translated to French in 1580. Traces of Marazzo's cut-and-thrust swordplay can still be found as late as Giacomo de Grassi's Treatise of 1570, although de Grassi preferred thrusting over cutting, so his work is generally treated as a rapier fencing manual rather than a single-handed sword manual. The Higgins Armory Museum has an original copy of his treatise.